Namaste everyone. This lecture is on plasma proteins. In this lecture of plasma proteins, I will be explaining you what are plasma proteins, what are the different types of plasma proteins, from where the plasma proteins are synthesized and functions of plasma proteins. Let's start with what are plasma proteins. Blood is made up of water component that is the plasma. So, this is the plasma and cells. So, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are present within the blood. The plasma is constituted by, the plasma is constituted by organic and inorganic water soluble substances. The major water soluble substance present in the plasma are proteinaceous substances, they are plasma proteins. Now, let us understand what are the different types of plasma proteins. There are more than 100 types of plasma proteins. Majorly, they are albumin, globulin and fibrinogen. Now, let us see their shapes. Albumin is usually oval in shape, globulin is globular in shape and fibrinogen is elongated. Now, let us see the molecular weight of these plasma proteins. Albumin molecular weight is around 69,000, globulin molecular weight is around 90,000 to 150,000, the fibrinogen molecular weight is around 5 lakhs. Now, let us see the concentration of these plasma proteins. The total plasma protein concentration is around 6 to 8 gram per deciliter. The albumin concentration is around 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter. Globulins are around 2.5 to 3.5 gram per deciliter. And fibrinogen is the least with 200 to 400 in milligrams per deciliter. So, in this we can understand the albumin is the least in molecular weight, but in concentration it is larger in number. The albumin concentration is the highest compared to all other plasma proteins. Fibrinogen is least in concentration, but heavy in so molecular weight. Different types of plasma proteins are albumin, globulin, fibrinogen. There are subtypes in globulins. They are alpha globulin, beta globulin and gamma globulins. Again al alpha are having two further subtypes alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now let us see from where these plasma proteins are synthesized. Albumin is mainly synthesized from the hepatocytes of liver. Hepatocytes are the liver cells. So liver is the organ from where the albumin is synthesized. Globulins mainly alpha and beta are from the same hepatocytes of liver. Fibrinogen is also synthesized from hepatocytes of liver along with other coagulation factors. But gamma globulins is an exception. This is synthesized from the B lymphocytes. So, the B lymphocytes will differentiate into plasma cells. This B lymphocytes will get differentiate into plasma cells and these plasma cells actually synthesize the immunoglobulins or antibodies. Now, we will see what are the different functions of plasma proteins. Plasma proteins exerts colloidal osmotic pressure. We will see what is this colloidal osmotic pressure, how, what are the different roles of plasma proteins. See, this is the blood vessel. Blood is flowing in the blood vessel and when this blood reaches the capillary, when the blood reaches the capillaries, this blood has to move out of the capillary, the water content has to move out of the capillaries and it has to reach the interstitial space. So, this is the capillary and this is the interstitium. 
so blood has to carry the nutrients for the cells so the dissolved substances within the blood has to be transported from the capillaries into the interstitium from the interstitium the cells will pick up the nutrients for its metabolic activities and cell survival so how does the capillary exchange occurs we'll understand and what is the role of plasma proteins in the capillary exchange for the filtration to occur across the capillary membrane there are two forces acting in opposite direction one is the blood pressure itself the pressure because of the water molecules in the plasma will exert pressure on the wall of the vessels so this force is trying to push the water molecules out of the capillaries so this is the because of the blood pressure or we can call it as hydrostatic pressure so hydrostatic pressure is that force which is trying to push the water molecules from the capillaries into the interstitium but there is some other opposing force which is trying to pull back the water from the interstitium we call it as osmotic pressure or this is because of the solutes that are dissolved in the plasma and they remain in the plasma compartment itself so the plasma proteins which are present in the plasma these they attract the water molecules from the other compartment that is the interstitial compartment and they bring the water molecules or they attract the water molecules so that the water molecules from the interstitial compartment will reach the capillary compartment so they are attracting force this osmotic pressure is the attracting force that is mainly exerted by the plasma proteins and these proteins are actually they are colloids so the pressure exerted by the colloids in order to pull back the water from the interstitium into the capillary is the colloidal osmotic pressure so plasma proteins are acting as solutes so in the plasma the solute concentration is more compared to the interstitium so the water has to move from lower solute concentration to the higher solute concentration that is from the interstitium into the capillaries so water will be pulled back or it is drawn back into the capillaries by this osmotic pressure force so if the, if at all the hydrostatic pressures are more than the osmotic pressures what happens the filtration will be more so the force that is trying to push the water molecules outwards that is hydrostatic pressure if it is more than the driving force attracting force net filtration happens if at all the attracting force is more than the outward pushing force what happens if at all attracting force is more than the outward pushing force the net resultant is pulling back the water from the interstitium into the capillaries so if at all colloidal osmotic pressure is more than the hydrostatic pressures this colloidal osmotic pressure will exert the exert the pressure across the capillary membrane and it pulls back the water molecules from the interstitium into the capillaries because it is having the osmotically active role in attracting the water molecules because of its more solute concentration increasing the osmotic gradient across the capillary membrane this is a capillary the capillary is continuous at one end through arterial end and this capillary is continuous with the veins so we'll see this as the arterial end of the capillary and this portion is the venous end of the capillary and this portion is the interstitium interstitium so the water molecules or the plasma has to move from the capillaries into the interstitium and the arterial end of the capillaries to provide nourishment to the cells and finally the water molecules which are entering the interstitium have to return back to the capillaries at the venous end so the driving force here for filtration of water molecules or the plasma is the hydrostatic pressure more than colloidal osmotic pressure at the arterial end of the capillary the hydrostatic pressure is outward force whereas the colloidal osmotic pressure is the inward force so at the arterial end of the capillaries the hydrostatic pressures are more around 35 mm of mercury whereas the colloidal osmotic pressures the attracting forces are 25 mm of mercury so there is a difference of 10 mm of mercury this pressure 10 mm pressure is enough to cause filtration to happen at this level so hydrostatic pressures are pushing the water molecules whereas 
osmotic pressures are pulling the water molecules. When the hydrostatic pressures are more, here at the arterial end of the capillaries, the water molecules will move out of the capillaries into the interstitium. So, this will result in filtration, filtration at the arterial end. Now, here the filtered water has to return back to the capillaries at the venous end. So, here because of the filtration happening, the more and more water molecules are moving out, the hydrostatic pressure reduces. Consider the hydrostatic pressures are 15 at venous end of the capillaries. But how about the colloidal osmotic pressures which are attracting forces? Colloidal osmotic pressures which are attracting forces are the same because the plasma proteins which are present in the capillaries will not be moving from the capillary into the interstitium because the capillary membrane is impermeable for plasma proteins and they will be exerting the same 25 millimeters of mercury of uh, osmotic pressures. So, here at the venous end of the capillaries, the attracting force is more than the hydrostatic force. The colloidal osmotic pressure is more than the hydrostatic pressure. So, here because of this, more and more water molecules that are in the interstitium will be taken back into the veins. So, here net resultant reabsorption is happening that is the movement of water from the interstitium into the capillaries, back into the capillaries, the net resultant reabsorption of water. So, in this direction movement is happening when colloidal osmotic pressures are more than the hydrostatic pressures. So, what happens now we will see the applications. If at all colloidal osmotic pressure is reduced, the colloidal osmotic pressure is because of mainly the plasma proteins which are remaining only in the compartment that is in the capillary compartment and they are not moving out of the capillaries. So, if at all these colloidal osmotic pressures are reduced in case of decreased plasma protein concentration or decreased synthesis of plasma proteins, the net resultant attracting force is reduced. So, here what happens? The filtration force will be more and more than the colloidal osmotic pressure. So, more filtration happens, but attracting force when the attracting force is less, more and more filtration is happening. But here in the venous end of the capillaries, when there is net resultant reduced attracting force, attracting force is less. So, more and more water molecules gets accumulated in the interstitium. So, the, from the interstitium, the water will not enter back into the capillaries. So, that will result in excess filtration, increased filtration and decreased reabsorption. So, filtration of water molecule is more from the capillary into the interstitium, reabsorption of water molecule back into the capillary will be reduced. So, that will result in excessive accumulation of water in the interstitium that will result in edema formation. So, edema is nothing but excess accumulation of water in the interstitial space. This is because of decreased colloidal osmotic pressure in the capillaries. So, these colloidal osmotic pressure in the capillaries are mainly exerted by the plasma proteins and among the plasma proteins, albumin accounts to 80 percentage of the total colloidal osmotic pressure. So, the main plasma protein which exerts lot of, lot of attracting forces is the albumin. Why albumin? Why not? the other plasma proteins because of its increased concentration. So, the osmotic gradient is directly related to the number of molecules or number of osmoles and the albumin concentration is the highest among the plasma proteins. So, the albumin effect in osmotic gradient creation is maximum and whenever there is some diseases of liver the synthesis of albumin is affected. So, when there is decreased albumin levels, the osmotic gradient is also reduced, the colloidal osmotic pressure is decreased, decrease in colloidal osmotic pressure and finally resulting in edema, formation of edema. So, what are the different causes for decrease in colloidal osmotic pressure means? The, that can be either decrease in the synthesis of plasma protein, mainly the albumin from the liver. So, in case of alcoholic liver diseases, alcoholic liver disease or cirrhosis of liver, the liver cells are damaged 
the liver cells are not synthesizing adequate amount of albumin resulting in decreased colloidal osmotic pressure in the capillaries leading to formation of edema. Also edema can happen when more and more albumin is filtered through the kidneys and it is lost in the urine. We call it as albuminuria. So in case of albuminuria, the albumin which is present in the blood is passing through the kidneys and the kidneys are excreting more albumin. So what happens to the plasma albumin concentration? There will be decreased plasma albumin concentration and thereby there is decreased collateral osmotic pressure and followed by formation of excess accumulation of fluid and edema. So in case of loss of albumin in urine, so we call it as albumin urea. So some conditions like nephrotic syndrome, nephrotic syndrome is a condition where in kidneys the glomerular membrane is affected and glomerular membrane will be more permeable for the albumin. So albumin will pass the glomerular membrane and from the blood it is filtered into the fluid in the nephrons and it is lost in the urine. So the plasma albumin concentration decreases because of increased filtration of albumin at the nephrons glomerular plasma albumin concentration can also be reduced when more and more albumin is lost through the feces that means the intestine will remove out the albumin from the blood and this albumin is lost through the stools fecal content so this can happen in certain protein losing enteropathy conditions and also in case of ileitis the large intestine, small intestine affected due to some inflammatory conditions that will cause more and more albumin to be lost through the GI system and also reducing the blood albumin levels. So one of the condition where the albumin is lost through the GI system is protein losing enteropathy, protein losing enteropathy.